Father, as we come together this morning, we lift each other up to you. We know that you are a mighty God. We know that you're able to do all things. And you also know that you are so wise that you know not to always do exactly what we want, but we, you always do what we need. Father, as we come together this day, we ask that you'll look upon mercy with, upon us, forgive us of our many sins, forgive us of those things that we've done wrong, those things that we failed to do right. Father, as we uh, look or, and see all the incredible things you've done for us, we know that all the good things came from you. All the freedoms, all the abilities, all the health, all the things that we, you have given us, they all came from you, and we thank you for them. And Father, as we look upon each other, our needs and the needs of each other, we ask that you will uh, lift Kenny up, that he will return it to us uh, well soon. We ask that you will look upon Darren as he uh, presents today's sermon. We ask that you will help us as we grow and develop in you. And Father, outside these walls, we ask that you will send your convicting love upon this community so that they will be seeking you and then look upon us and make us the kind of Christians that will bring people to you. Father, we ask you to look upon this uh, service, bless it, keep it, and Father, make it bring people closer to a living and great God. We ask all these things in, the, in your name. Amen. Good morning, Grace Baptist. It's good to see you today. Good to see you here well uh, today with all the illnesses that seem to be flaring up. Our pastor, his extended family, and all have got so much illness. And as you look around the room, it makes a difference when they're not here. Uh, but uh, we're glad that you are here this morning. Our first hymn today is number 185, There's a Song in the Air. Let's stand together as we sing the first, second, and fourth stanzas. Number 185. seated and turn to number 191, The Birthday of a King. In the little village of Bethlehem, there lay a child one day, and the sky was bright with a holy light for the place where Jesus Wow. 
morning I'll be reading from the first chapter of Luke. I'll be using the New King James Version. Um, like Kenny, I use different translations. But the Christmas story and the, the events leading up to it, uh, to me, the, the poetry of the, uh, the Old English just kind of resonates. Reading about Zechariah, and there appeared unto him, Zechariah, an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense, and when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy, prayer, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Our next hymn this morning is number 196, O Little Town of Bethlehem. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth stanzas. Come to us, abide with us, O oh Lord, Emmanuel. 
Last congregational hymn this morning before Darren comes. Number 202, How Great Our Joy. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth stanzas. While by the sheep we watched at night, glad tidings brought an angel bright. How great our joy. Joy, 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 praise with the Lord in heaven on high, praise with the Lord in heaven on high. There shall be born, so he did say, in Bethlehem a child today, how great a joy, great a joy, 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 joy. of God will cherish well, that ever joy our hearts shall fill. How great a joy, great a joy, 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 praise with the Lord in heaven on high, praise with the Lord in heaven. for that good singing. <clears throat> Thank you, Don. Well, I'm sure the surprise look on many of your faces matches the surprise look on mine last night at 9.30 when Andrew called and uh, asked if I would fill in for Kenny today. Uh, unlike Ed, I have not learned to put my phone on Do Not Disturb before 9 o'clock on Saturday night. <laughs> So, uh, tag, I'm it, you know. Uh, many years ago, I can't remember if it was a seminar or, or what, I had a gentleman speaking, and he said that um, preaching is 10% preparation and 90% presentation. Well, this morning, you're going to get 2% preparation and 98% presentation. <laughs> Uh, it's truly humbling to ask, uh, seriously, for Kenny to ask me to fill in for him this morning. Um, it's most of my preaching experience over the years had been at assisted living homes. Uh, so if any of you feel inclined to sleep this morning, it won't bother me a bit, okay? <laughs> Christmas fear, Christmas hope. Christmas fear, Christmas hope. Join me as I pray. Uh, dear Lord, this morning we come to you as our creator, as our savior, and Lord as our sustainer. And the only reason that we can call on you is, Lord, is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we celebrate this season, we, we must think of our friends and family members that are, are battling illness this year, Lord. That uh, The pastor's family and others we know with the flu, COVID, 
uh, stomach viruses, Lord, just all kind of things. And we just pray that you would touch them with your healing hand, provide comfort where comfort's needed. And now as we look at these uh, verses, Lord, we just pray that, uh, that uh, the words from my mouth would be encouraging, that uh, it would speak to the people's hearts and, uh, and awaken them to uh, the meaning of some of these scriptures this time of year. For these things I pray in your name. Amen. Uh, it's Christmas. We're, it's the last week before Christmas. We're in the home stretch. Everybody's rushing. Uh, everybody's, you know, kind of get that last fixings for the meal, that last present and everything. And then the big finale will be Sunday, next Sunday. And uh, it'll, it'll be there. Well, believe it or not, and some of you, uh, especially with a gray hair like me, realize that Christmas is not like Hallmark movies depicted. There's, there's headaches, there's problems, uh, things don't go the way we want them to. And, uh, and then we, we think about the year past, and uh, as I was hit going over everything again this morning, I thought of a, that great philosopher of our time, John Lennon, and the song he wrote, So This Is Christmas, and What Have You Done Another Year Over? And a new young just begun. And so this is Christmas. I hope you have fun. The near and the dear ones, the, the old and the young. A very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's hope it's a good one without any fear. When we think of Christmas, we have these beautiful manger scenes and we look at them and the, the lights and the trees. And, and we don't really capture the real issues of what that first Christmas was. There's a lot of fear a lot of unknown that went on back then. And tonight, today, I want to look at some passages where it says that. Now, as I said, I'm using the New King James Version. Some of you may be using a, a, a different translation. And instead of fear not, it'll say, say don't be afraid. So they, they interchange there. So we are in a season, for a lot of people, that's a season of dread. Uh, for some, Christmas is a time of joy, but they don't, have never really known joy. It's a time of love, and they've never really experienced love. It's a time of goodwill to men, and they don't really uh, want to give it. If you don't believe that, just drive through Atlanta during the daytime. And Christmas is a time of hope, but they feel helpless. Christmas brings us a timely remember, a reminder that hope is to replace fear. The same fear many of us will have in the coming year. A fear of health problems, financial problems, family problems. You name it, it's there. We live in a, in a world that's plagued with sin, and so we have the problems that we do. Uh, now, a certain amount of fear is necessary for survival. Uh, that's why we look both ways when we cross the street. That's why at an intersection I hesitate before I start off because of that person that's looking at their cell phone coming through the intersection doesn't T-bone me. Fear prompts us to be proactive. That's why college kids study to make the grade. Why we go to the doctor and get checkups. And, uh, you know, it prompts us to, to do the things to re minimize risk during the year. And that's normal. Uh, and we all deal with some kind of fear in life. I'm reminded of the little boy, the, the storm came up and the lightning flashed and, and the, you know, the thunder rolled and shook the house and he, he come up and he, mom come in the room and he begged her to stay with him and said, mommy, please stay with me tonight. And she replied, but I have to stay with daddy. The little boy replied under his breath, that big sissy, you know. <laughs> As we've read the Chris, if you read the Christmas story, have you ever noticed the number of fear knots? Fear not, don't be afraid. The Christmas story shouts fear not. This is a command that uh, says stop doing something you're doing and pay attention. Don't be afraid what's going on. So we're going to look at four occasions, different parts of the Christmas story, different uh, scriptures, where the word fear not or don't be afraid is given to the main players in Christmas. The first one is, don't be afraid of praying big prayers. Don't be afraid of pay, praying big prayers. Luke 1, 11 through 13, the scriptures I just read. 
Zacharias was serving as the priest at the time in the temple, and it was his job to go in and burn incense and pray and so forth on the behalf of the children of Israel. So while he was in there, an angel appeared to him. And you remember the story? He said, you're going to have a son. And uh, he said, oh, come on. How's that going to happen? I'm old. My wife's old, you know. But they had been praying for a son. And, and here's an angel telling him it's going to happen. Well, instead of immediately accepting John the Baptist's message, uh, the angel's message about John, Zechariah said, how shall I know this? Because he really didn't believe it. How many times do we pray, and then when we get an answer, we don't believe it's the answer that we were praying for? Our unbelief as Christians is one of the greatest hindrances to God's ability to work in our lives. Uh, lacking the faith the size of a mustard seed, we stumble doing God's work. So Zacharias, he was struck, struck mute. When Elizabeth had the baby and the baby was eight days old, they brought him to be circumcised and then to name him. Zechariah followed the angel's instructions then and named him John and suddenly regained his ability to speak. And he burst forth in praise. That's in Luke 1, if you want to read it. And he said, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and redeemed his people. I believe God answers prayer and oftentimes he gives us more than we ask for when we pray. If you, you know, our faith would be a lot stronger if we would look back instead of look forward. At the time God has answered prayer for us and the times he's taken care of us when we really didn't even remember to pray for something or somebody. God does that. Zacharias wanted a son. He got a son. Was a prophet chosen by God to prepare the way for our Savior. And the son had a special name. He wasn't named the traditional family name. He was named John. So don't be afraid. God answers prayer. Don't be afraid of what appears to be humanly impossible. Luke 1, 28 through 30. Speaking to Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou who art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered in her mind what manner of greeting this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. We worship and serve a miracle-working God, don't we? In verse 37, the angel went on to say, For God, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Shall is a, is a legal imperative that gives you no other uh, alternative. It will be done. So nothing is impossible with God. Uh, Jeremiah says, O Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. I'm sure when you started out with this church, it looked like it was going to be insurmountable. But God supplied and supplied the building. And by the way, one of the things that we were impressed when we first walked in is that you had an analog and a digital clock back there where the pastor can see it. You know, that, that there's some kind of message in that, I'm sure, but it's directed at the pastor. And don't worry, you'll get out plenty early today. Uh, this episode reminds us that God supplies our needs. What needs did God supply for, for Mary? Well, first, Joseph's understanding. I mean, you know, can you imagine the conversation? Your fiancé comes up to you six months before you're to be married and says, guess what? You know, she had a, she had a real uh, serious cause for being concerned because back then she could have been stoned if Joseph had desired it under that circumstances. Uh, Elizabeth's encouragement. An understanding. Elizabeth was her cousin. When she went to her, uh, she encouraged her, and it led to Mary's uh, praise called the Magnificent. And I would suggest that your Christmas reading that you take time and read that, the Magnificent in Luke. Um, a place to bear a baby in a crowded village. God supplied that for her. So sometimes... You know, God doesn't always give us our wants. I mean, 
my wife's going to kill me for my wife's going to kill me for telling y'all this. So if any of you got a spare bedroom, I may need it uh, after this one. We were we were uh, married about six years, and the doctor told us probably wasn't going to have children. So we were thinking in terms of a nice Porsche, you know, nice expensive sports car. And lo and behold, we get this call one day. Hey, here's an opportunity for you to adopt a baby. I said, well, okay, yeah, that, that sounds good. So we obtained the lawyer and started through the process. And then I wake up, get called one morning after working midnight shift and being in the bed about two hours, and it's the lawyer, and he says, hey, guess what? It's two. <laughs> and so it was twins. Unexpectedly, God answered prayers, but not in the way that we had been praying. Don't be afraid of what is humanly impossible. God will supply your needs, not your wants, but your needs. So this year at Christmas time, think back over the past year and think, what did God give me that I really didn't deserve and I really didn't ask for, but he supplied it. And then look forward to next year with anticipation on how God is going to work in your life. The third thing is don't be afraid of, of obeying God. Um, I'm going to flip over to Matthew 1, 19 through 24 for that one. And I didn't mark that one, but I'm going to use it. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, there's that fear not again, to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, all that was done that the scriptures could be fulfilled. So we worship a miracle-working God. I love, again, what the angel said in verse 37. Nothing is impossible with God. Uh, God calls for immediate obedience, obedience in our life. Uh, the kind of obedience that requires us to walk by faith and not by sight. It requires us to change and not remain the same. It requires us to commitment, not complacency. It requires growth, not being a spiritual holding pattern. Uh, I like to tell people God didn't save anybody to sit on a pew and occupy space. We can get anybody to do that. Despite our human fears, the safest place to be is right in the center of God's will. And when we obey, we are blessed. If you want to be blessed this next year, be obedient to God. Look for what he wants you to do. Listen to what he has to say to you. The Bible says, Then Joseph did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. So be obedient. Fourth and last is fear not for the message of Christmas is for everyone, for everywhere, and all the time. Luke 2, 8 through 10 is the, really the focal passage that I want to speak on this morning. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were very much afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. God's first delivered message of the Messiah's birth went to who? It went to shepherds. Shepherds. Common people, uh, the, the people that were really social outcasts of the time. They could not, uh, they had a bad reputation. Uh, they had the impossible barrier of, of uh, observing the Jewish holidays and uh, Jewish tradition because of their work. Uh, the temple rituals were out of, out of reach for them. So they were considered religiously unclean and unacceptable. But God went to them. He went to them first. He delivered that redeeming message to them. 
what God is saying here, the announcement to the shepherd is the good news of hope is for all people. It's for not just the elite, not just for the people that sit on a pew on a Sunday morning. It's for the homeless person, the drug addict, for all nationalities, for the whole world. The message of Christmas, the dawn of redeeming grace, is in reality the only totally inclusive non-discriminating event in history when God came to this world where God so loved the world that he saved his only son the first thing the angel said to the shepherds was what fear not do not be afraid don't let fear rule your life or ruin the wonderful news that is happening around you God is working the good news was then and is today that Jesus is born in Bethlehem he is Emmanuel, God with us. He is still Emmanuel. He is still with us. So fear not. God is with you through Christmas and the new year and every week, every weekday, every weekend in 2023. When the great Chicago fire ravaged that city, a man's shop was burned to the ground. He arrived at the ruins the next morning carrying a sign and a table. And he set it up among the debris. And as he sat down, he put the sign up and said, Everything lost except wife, children, and hope. Business will resume as usual tomorrow. That's the kind of hope and the kind of drive that we need to replace fear with in this coming year. A long time ago... 2,500 so years ago, God looked down at the mess we made of this world and decided people need hope. So hope came, and that's why the angel could declare, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. The hope of Israel and the hope of you and I and all mankind on this earth is Jesus Christ. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Fear is replaced by faith. And where faith leaves, faith fails, fear takes its place. So this Christmas, when you're rushing about and you're getting all upset because you didn't have the perfect gift, the shoes you bought your husband don't fit, the clothes you bought your wife don't fit, the diamond you bought your wife's not big enough, whatever the reason, don't be upset about it. Think about the great thing that we got on that Christmas morning. So that's all I've got this morning. I told you it was 2% preparation and 98%. Then. So this morning, we're not going to have an invitation, but I'm going to ask the pianist to play for a few minutes. I ask you to bow your head and contemplate this past year and the coming year. And where have I been afraid? Where can I improve my walk with Jesus through faith where is my hope lie if you would bow your heads while she plays and she'll play for a few moments and then I'll close the prayer thank you this morning for the message of Christmas, for the message of hope, the message of salvation, the dawn of redeeming grace. And Lord, I just pray that uh, though this is a few words and a few simple words that the people would take it to the heart and even myself, Lord, and look forward to the coming year with happiness and a brave outlook 
and an outlook to serve you. These things I pray in your name. Amen. Don has a few things to say. Good morning, Grace, again. <laughs> Thank you, Darren, for that message this morning. I've enjoyed being your choir director for the past four and a half years that our church has been organized. Uh, Janice and I came to Grace during the second meeting of this congregation, and uh, I started leading the music and and. Uh, established a choir shortly after that, and this it's been a great ride. I have just marveled at the blessings uh, that God has bestowed upon us, the, the things that, uh, that our church has accomplished in such a short time. Uh, it's just been amazing to me, and I, I, I continue to be amazed at the, uh, the support uh, that each of you give uh, the church uh, as, uh, as we continue on in, in, in what is, is really a, a, a brief history uh, for, um, uh, for our church. One great source of my joy has been serving along, alongside my pastor, Kenny. Uh, Kenny has been for many years and remains my best friend. Uh, we have... Uh, you know, had so uh, many good times together, but then we've worked through some stuff together too. And uh, we, uh, we remain uh, good friends. Uh, Pre-COVID, um, I, I wish I knew how many um, uh, baskets of chips and bowls of salsa gave their all while we talked over church business and, and, and planned and all. Uh, but COVID did kind of put, a, put an end to that kind of thing. But uh, so that has been a great source of joy for me. Another source of joy has been the choir. And uh, we, we, we established our choir. And, and uh, at one time we had 17 uh, in our choir. Uh, but uh, through COVID and, and uh, um, other things, you know, we just now we're, we're, we're down to, to an ensemble, uh, which, uh, which I still love. Um, it's it's uh, um, uh, in, in, my, uh, in my time as leading music in not only this church, but other churches, I can honestly say it is the first time that I've had a, had, a, had a group where everybody reads music. And that is so nice. Uh, I, I enjoy that. And I hope that you can tell that when we bring our, uh, when we bring our selections on Sunday mornings. But I, I appreciated this. I have so appreciated the, uh, uh, the, the support that I've gotten from, uh, from the choir and from you as a congregation. There is seldom a Sunday that goes by that after the service, uh, people do not come up to me and say, hey, Don, really liked the choir special today. Hey, Don, love those hymns today, some of my special, some of my, some of my favorite hymns. And, uh, you know, when I'm trying to put together a song service and I'm trying to, to um, base it on what Kenny is going to be talking about uh, and so, that, so that the service flows together, I, I, that just really means... Uh, a lot to me that you speak up and and uh, tell me that uh, that has been good. Another blessing for me has been to work with uh, Jane and Betty as as my accompanist. Um, you don't know, or maybe you do, uh, how fortunate, how blessed we are as a church. You know, to have not one but two accomplished pianists. You know that uh, that play for us, uh, and and, are, and play and and are willing to play for us uh, every week. Um, you know, I, I led music at the Church on the Hill. Uh, I led music at uh, First Baptist in McDonough in another lifetime when I was up there, and uh, uh, so I, I've uh, uh, I've been around um, a little bit, and uh, it is just such a blessing to have 
someone like them. I have said in the past that uh, uh, I would direct the Atlanta Symphony if Jane was on the piano. I would I just tell you that I, I would I would have no fear. Uh, but uh, so it just uh, so so many so many wonderful things which which makes the day uh, a little tough for me because I'm I'm here to announce my retirement uh, from uh, from doing the music here at Grace. Uh, my last day will be Sunday, January the first. Now, I hope that this does not appear sudden to you guys because it's not. Uh, Kenny and I have been talking about this for the greater part of this year. Uh, the choir was made aware of it, um, I believe, back in July. And um, part of that was so that hopefully word would leak out <laughs> so, that, uh, so that this would not be a shock to anyone today. But um, I, want, I, want, yeah, I want you to know that one, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not a sudden thing. I want you to know that as far as I know and as far as my doctors know, I'm well. I haven't had any bad diagnosis or anything like that, so that's not a reason. And um, I also want you to know that Janice and I don't have any plans to go anywhere. So uh, we're still going to be here with you guys, with, uh, with the folks uh, that, that we love. But um, uh, I'm not getting any younger. Uh, the voice is certainly not getting any better. Um, uh, Janice would probably tell you that she's not so sure about my mind uh, sometimes. Uh, but, um, you know, Janice and I have just we're, just, we're just trying to simplify our lives a little bit. Uh, we have let go of uh, several things over the course of this year. Uh, and uh, some things that will be effective, some additional things that will be effective year in that uh, we, will, we will not be uh, involved in and, and, and hold an office in anymore. Just, just to uh, uh, simplify lives and, and have less uh, things uh, pulling on us. So um, just wanted you, want you to know those things. I wanted you to know my heart today. I wanted you to understand the reasons that, that we're doing this. And uh, I want you to know that uh, most, I guess one of the most important things I want you to carry away today is that, uh, you know, we're still going to be here. And uh, uh, still uh, be here, be an active, uh, supporting members uh, of, uh, of Grace Baptist Church. And I just uh, I thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for these last four and a half years. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about what, uh, what the future you know, we'll hold for our church. Darren, come on. I tell you, a, a, a music minister that walks alongside and supports your pastor is hard to come by. Uh, they can be derisive in the church or they can be the greatest support system a pastor can have. And one of the reasons or one of the things that Deb and I saw, of course, we'd known Don a long time. Uh, before we came here was that uh, that Don truly walked alongside Kenny and uh, and supported him you could see it in the music and in the service and uh, and uh, I'm glad he's still going to be around here because he's the best dressed man in the church and kind of <laughs> sets the standard for us and we'll just have to you know none of us reach it but will Don I'm gonna ask you and Janet if y'all stand at the back of the church and as we dismiss and you know there so Join me as we dismiss in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you this morning and to say it's truly good to be in the house of the Lord. And Lord, while, uh, while we may be grieved that uh, Don has chosen to, to uh, retire, we are excited for him as he examines the new path in his life. We just pray your continued blessing on him. And Lord, we're excited that they're going to stay a part of this congregation. So, Lord, we just pray for each person as they go out to this busy next week. Pray the focus will be on you. We pray for health and wellness. And we pray for a, a time of uh, reflection through this Christmas. For these things, I pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.